Okay, so on the page where we did our value scales, we're gonna go ahead and practice drawing the sphere. So we're going to draw this and shade this um, today, and then we'll label it when we're completely done. So if you have a compass and you want to draw um, a circle, um, you can go ahead and do that. Make it maybe have an inch radius right, to make a two inch radius um, circle. Or you could do like 0.75 to do one and a half. We're gonna go ahead and practice the one and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and just draw myself one and a half, a diameter of one and a half. And I could even find the middle there and do the same thing. So this is at 0.75 kind of draw myself across and I could go ahead and use like a light hand to kind of draw in a circle. Now I'm going to go ahead and just kind of draw it in on the side here using like a whole arm to draw my circle as well. So just make sure it's a circular shape. Feel free to kind of clean it up when you're done. But take some time to kind of perfect yourself a circle-ish shape so that we can put in our values. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna give myself a light source. So we're gonna use this kind of as our guidance. So we're gonna put a sun right here, right? So if the light was shining on the sphere, the sphere is gonna be lightest over here, and then it's gonna be darkest over here. We're gonna draw in a cast shadow, right? And it, so it should be this elliptical shape, and it's gonna be opposite of where that light source is. So you can go ahead and shade that as well. And then, when we're shading, I'm gonna go ahead and use my 4B pencil because I can get a really nice range of value. You could also use your HB pencil if you wanted to as well, but I would not use the 4H. The 4H isn't very good for shading. So when you're shading, I would suggest starting with your darker values first. I think it's much easier than starting with your lightest. So over on this side over here, I'm gonna start with my shadow and the shadow on the object is gonna be kind of your darkest value. Now when I'm shading, you're probably noticing that I'm using a curved line, right? Because um, the object is curved. So if I just shaded with a straight line, it might look kind of flat. So I'm gonna shade with a curved line and then as it moves to the edge, I'm gonna let it get a little bit lighter on the bottom edge of this sphere. So I'm using short, close, overlapping marks. Okay, and I'm gonna have a gradual transition from that darkest value that's kind of like a crescent shape into what we call reflected light. So as light travels, it travels in a straight line. And so it's gonna hit the table and it's gonna bounce back up. And so the under section of this, you can see it's just a little bit lighter. It's a little bit lighter. See how you see the edge on this overhand, uh, or on this handout, where this cast shadow is darker. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it get lighter. And then as the object gets closer to the light side, it's going to get lighter and lighter. So I'm gonna use less layers. Right? And I'm like shading here so that this highlight, I'm gonna kind of circle it here. The highlight on this is going to be a circle itself. So maybe I use my pencil holding it back a little bit farther. 
so that I lightly, 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 right, create a real nice value. So now what I can do is make gradual transitions, shading with the contours. Right, I can even curve it up this way. So it's going to be a light, light gray here on the end, or the edge, I should say. And I'm going to let the highlight be completely white. So let's take some time to clean up the craftsmanship, make it look as smooth as possible. We want, don't want it to look textured or hairy. Let's keep those marks nice and short and close. It really doesn't matter how dark this gets because right now it's like this sphere is kind of like a gray. And it's something shiny because that sphere or that highlight I should say is completely white. But if you keep getting this darker, it might look like this sphere is maybe a gray thing rather than a white thing. Or if it's really, really light, it's gonna look like it's a ping pong ball instead of a gray sphere. So I'm gonna make gradual transitions. If I want this shadow to be really, really dark, remember I can use the tip of the pencil Gonna fill in the tooth of it. And then do a gradual transition out. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead, and since this is a flat tabletop, when I go to do the cast shadow, I'm gonna use a straight line here. I'm gonna have it go horizontally out so that it feels like it's on a flat surface. Now, sometimes cast shadows are crisp, but sometimes they too are a little bit lighter on the edges. And sometimes they're a little extra dark near the object, right? So it looks like it is sitting on a tabletop. If you got too dark in a place, feel free to use your, your needed eraser. You know, if I need to lighten it, if I need to, you know, make more of a gradual transition, I can fix it, okay? Um, I've created a few smudges, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up before I go to label this. All right, so, we wanna make sure, because I'm gonna use this vocabulary with you, and we're not gonna be filling out our vocabulary sheet, which you could find online if you want to. Right? So this right here is our light source. Right? This lightest value right here where it's white is called our highlight. Right? So your highlight is gonna be your lightest value. Okay, so go ahead and write that in for yourself. Okay. Then on the object, right, our darkest value is going to be our shadow or our core shadow. That's going to be your darkest value. On object. Okay. And so remember, if the light source is hitting, this is where the light hits the most. And then as it moves, it's gonna have, 
less and less light's going to reach it, so the valley is going to get darker until no light is researching, reaching that shadow. So then the in-between, we're going to call our midtones. Right? So this is our middle values. So you're going to have a nice range from really light to really dark. Okay? And then underneath the shadow, we have our reflected light. Okay? Your reflected light is where light bounces off of the table. And then it illuminates the underside the underside of your object. Okay? And then the last part here is your cast shadow. So that's your shadow that is projected onto another surface. So this could be on another object, like a shadow could be projected on like a hand, right? This pencil is going to have its own shadow on my hand. It could be on a tabletop, it could be on a piece of fabric, and so on. So make sure that you label all of these for yourself because these are terms that we will use throughout um, the rest of the semester when we are making things look three-dimensional.